Welcome back to Kremen. You're here with Lance. We've set our guide bushing, our collet, our bar loader, and now we're gonna set some tools. So in this video right here is what we're gonna do is we're going to replace and touch off tools that we're gonna be using. One's gonna be our cutoff. One is going to be a turn tool. We will be using a live end mill holder and we will set a boring bar. So let's start with first things first. Tool number one, it's going to be our cutoff. So there's two set screws right here on this gang. We call them wedges. We will loosen these up. We will pull the tool hauler out. We will set it to the side. And what I like to do is I'll take a rag and I'll wipe that pocket out because we want to make sure that that pocket is good and clean for the next tool. Place the insert, put that back in and tighten it down. A lot of people think these need to be Gorilla Hand tight. They do not. Just snug them. The wedges built in will hold them in place. We'll start by inserting this back into that tool pocket. From here, I will simply use a set screw to hold that tool in place. Now I'll go to my control panel. We'll go to our preparation page. We're gonna to go to man set. We're gonna pick the diameter. Cycle start, loosen the tool from the set screw that you did holding it in place. Simply rest the tool on top of the material diameter. From here I will snug the screws back up, come back to my control panel and go to position point. That's gonna lift the insert off the steel. From there I will snug everything down. Also, these, these do not need to be gorilla tight. They are held in by the wedges. Simply snug them down. Now we'll move on to our next tool. It's gonna to be tool number three. So what we'll do is we'll go to our control panel. We hit escape to get out of here. We'll go to tool number three. We're gonna to go to position point. Highlight position point. Turn your feed dial down, cycle start. Three comes up, comes over, it's ready to be changed. So the same process. Loosen the wedges, remove the holder, and we will change the insert. Putting our new insert in, our insert clamp. We're gonna go to our preparation page. We're gonna go to our man set. We're gonna select diameter. We'll hit the cycle start button. It goes up, comes back down. Here we'll put the tool back in. Just rest that tool on your material. We'll snug it down. Here I'll go to my position point on the control panel. They'll raise up, they'll get out of the way, and now I'll snug the wedges down that hold the tool in. With the tools tightened down, we'll move on to our next tool, which is gonna be on the live section, tool number seven. So we'll come back over here, we'll escape to get out of here. We'll go to tool seven. We're gonna stay on diameter. I turn my feed control down. I'm gonna to go to my position point. That's gonna to bring tool seven over to us. And what I like to do is I'll go to manual mode. I'll go to my X and I will pick that up and get it out of the way for right now. When it's up out of the way, I will grab the wrenches, remove the tool that was previously being used. We're gonna remove the nut and the collet once it comes off. Here we'll move the collet, we'll set it to the side so it doesn't get lost. We will reload the new collet for the tool. Put that in the nut, it locks in place. Install nut and collet back in the machine. With that screwed in the machine, I will place the tool in the collet. Leave enough hanging out. Just kind of visually eyeball it hand tighten the nut. Once your hand tightened, go back to your wrenches. Tighten the collet and the nut right down. Now because I don't know where the tool tip in relation to the steel is, I will back the steel up before I go to my data set point. So here we'll just jog Z backwards. And now we will call tool seven to the manual data set page. So preparation, we're gonna go to diameter. Highlight diameter, real man set, cycle start. 
And at this time, the tool is it would be actually into the material. So as long as you never leave your man set page, you can set your diameter. So right now I will just jog it up above the material. I will go to longitude on the screen. I will feed the material out knowing that I'm above the stock. And from here, I like to use a set of, I like to use a piece of paper. You can use plastic, anything is use it as like a feeler gauge. I will jog the tool down close to the, close to the diameter of the material. I will turn my feed rate down and I will use the piece of paper as a slip fit between my tool and my stock. Once I start to feel the paper drag between the tool and the material, I can back up, I'll pull my, my paper out. I come back over here, I can see on my diameter, it's going to raise it up just under 600 thousandths. I can hit input and it takes the number that was here and it puts it in here. And I now I know that my material and my tool is roughly five to seven thousandths away from each other. We'll go to position point to get it away from the material. That raises it up. It's now a hundred thousandths above the stock. I will back my stock up. And that is how you set the tools on the gang slide of an L32. So in preparation for the next tool, we're going to physically face off the end of the bar so we can set a boring bar to the face. So from here, we'll go to our preparation. We're already there. We'll go to tool number three. We'll go to position point. Three is gonna come up, come over. What I'll do is using manual mode, I will just feed my Z out just enough to skim face the end of the bar. So we'll go to preparation. We'll go to cut off. You gotta double tap the start button, make sure everything's clear. And that faces the end of the material off. That gives us a zero plane with the tool that we're using to create zero. So from here, we'll call up our backside and physically touch the boring bar off to the face of that stock. All right, so now we're gonna to touch off tools 21 through 24. We'll just be using one. So we're gonna to touch off on tools 21. We'll get that one loose. Well, sometimes when the chips get stuck inside there, you gotta use the wrench. You don't have to wiggle them out. I recommend using gloves so nobody gets cut. But once you get it rolling, the holder should come right out with no problem. We'll take an air hose. We're gonna blast that hole real quick so we don't have the same trouble putting the new holder back in. Wipe it down with a quick rag. We'll grab our tool and our tool holder. We'll put that together with an Allen wrench. We'll lock that down. We'll take the completed insert holder. We'll put it back in here. With that just temporarily in the back side, we will call up, we'll go to our preparation page. We're gonna to go to tool 21. And you wanna set this in longitude. Always leave your longitude at zero. It does not accept, unless you're running G50 shifts, any move that's put inside there. So from here, longitude, man set, cycle start, the gang picks up, moves up out of the way, and it's gonna to come to a set position forward. With the material in the way, since we're cutting tubular stock, we don't we can't set off the center. We're gonna have to shift over a little bit and move our tool out to touch the face of the face of the steel. So from here we'll go to manual. We're gonna go to X2. We'll jog the tool over. And from here we'll pull the tool holder out to the face of the material. Once you have your insert set to the face of the material, go ahead and give one of the set screws a little bit of torque, just so it doesn't move. Get your hands and stuff out of the machine. We'll go back to our preparation. And we'll hit opposite retract, and that will send the subspindle home. With that being in its home position, I will use the set screws and lock that tool in place. In this next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the Fold pickoff collet and replace it with the one that we need for the job. We're going to start by removing the nut. 
Sometimes it helps if you have a little hammer. Most times they just break loose. Set everything to the side. We're gonna remove the collet. Once again, we'll set this to the side so we don't get it mixed up. With the rag, we'll wipe down the threads of the outside. We'll wipe down the inside. We'll grab our collet that we're gonna put in there. Slip fit, if you have to pound it in, that means you have chips or burrs or something inside the hole. Give it another nice little wipe down. Make sure there's nothing stuck to your collet. We're gonna reassemble the nut. Just has to be nice and snug. Make sure you don't over tighten. The next guy will greatly appreciate it. So now with the nut and stuff put back on here, we're gonna pull off the rear cover. And this is where we're going to fine tunely adjust our pickoff collar. I already have here a pin that we're gonna be setting the collet to because we know the, the turn diameter of the material. So first thing I'll do is I'll reach in here. I'll go back to the spanner nut, break that loose and we'll just back that off. I will cycle the chuck, take any slack out of it and I'll test fit to my pin. Slide the pin in there. We're not using the whole depth of the collet. Our part's pretty thin, so we're just gonna use the end of the collet for setting the tightness. Doesn't grip anything. We'll start fine tuning adjusting right here. Now we're gonna be picking off on aluminum tubing. I don't wanna set my collet pressure too tight. So I just like it where it grabs the pin and you can always adjust more as you get into the machine. How you know you're too tight after you run apart is you'll start crushing the hole diameter from where you started. So at this point, I'm gonna leave this right here. I like the way that it feels. I'll tighten the set screw on the back side of the spindle, replace my cover, put the cover back on, move my tools from the machine. And at this point in time, we're ready to go to a start position and actually cut a chip. All right, so now with our tooling set, we're actually gonna cut this part off. We're gonna send our machine home and we're going to dry run the program. So we'll start over here with the preparation. I have my material and stuff put out. I'm going to go to my cutoff. I'm gonna cycle start my cutoff. Right now it's gonna physically cut the part down. Once that's done, we unlock the main chuck. We're gonna go to a start position, cycle start. We relock the chuck. Now I say dry run. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run, let the machine run the program without physically turning on the spindles. So from here, we'll go to check, high speed check lit up, and we're gonna turn the bar loader off. From here with high speed check lit, we can double tap the cycle start button. The machine is actually physically running through the program and it's gonna pick up if we're missing on any error codes, if our radiuses or something isn't correct, or if we're missing a decimal point, it will pick that up. It is not 100% guarantee it's going to tell you if the machine is gonna crash. High speed check is not meant for that. It is a program editing crutch. So with this coming through, it says program check machine error. Even though it says error, that tells me that we're good to go. There's no physical alarms in the machine. So from here, we'll just hit reset. We'll hit escape, we'll go up from check, we'll go to auto, and from auto, I will hit go, and I will run through this slowly. I never take my hand off the feed dial. So from here, we'll hit go, double tap the button, I always have my hand on the feed dial. Now I can run this machine as slow or as fast as I want, watching what's going on in the machine, watching what's going on in my program. Sub spindle has come up. The boring bar is working on the inside. The sub spindle backs away. It's gonna come over, it's gonna knock out a part, if there were a part there, while the front side continues to machine the part. This is where the live tool is gonna, gonna come in. It's gonna cut our notch in the, in the front of our part. The tool drops down, the material is gonna move out. With that being done, you're gonna come over and make a little deburr pass. 
Now the sub spindle is going to come in and pick this part off while 201 comes down and parts it off. Got it. So yeah, that's how we set up our L32. If you have any questions or comments, bring them down below. If you like the video, like and subscribe. We'll see you later.